Let's get to the fight against COVID. Dr. Fauci warning against lifting too many U.S. restrictions right now. And he's also pointing to a surge of cases in Europe as a cautionary tale. Joining us right now to talk more about this is Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He's former FDA commissioner and CNBC contributor. He also serves on the boards of Illumina and Pfizer. And in his latest op-ed in The Wall Street Journal, he talks about what we can expect from schools this coming fall. Scott, first of all, I want to thank you because you've been with us every week for the last year, helping guide us through what's happening with these things. And I have to say, I've been feeling pretty good about the direction we're headed in the United States with the states with the case count coming down, with vaccinations really happening at a pretty rapid clip. And then you read what's happening in Europe and how things are on the rise there once again. Now, we're in a different boat. We are getting vaccines out there more quickly. But do we need to worry about another upswing in cases here? Well, look, I think we should be concerned um, that things can turn in a direction that we're not predicting. But right now, you're seeing B117 become pretty prevalent across the United States. It's more than 50 percent of cases in Texas and Florida and Southern California. Um, and you're not seeing the big upswing in cases that we might have expected once that variant uh, claimed hold in the United States. And probably the reason is that we have a lot of prior infections, so there's a lot of immunity already in the population. And we're vaccinating very aggressively against it. So whereas Earlier, I said we were sort of four to maybe six weeks behind Europe, and we pretty much were. Everything that happened in Europe eventually happened here. Now I think the tables have turned. We're ahead of Europe. I don't think that the conditions in Europe and the situation in Europe is necessarily predictive anymore of what's going to happen here, because we have much more immunity in our population, both from prior infection, which they have as well, but also now from vaccinations. So the fact that we haven't seen um, the, the sort of coronavirus upsurge again, have a fourth wave, even as B117 becomes the prevalent strain across the United States, I think bodes well. The one part of the country I'm a little bit worried about, we've talked about this, is New York, because this 1526 mutation is gaining a foothold here. And at least half of the cases of 1526 have that same mutation as the South African variant, that 484K mutation, that could make it um, more resistant to our vaccines and make it more likely that people get reinfected. We really don't understand that mutation well, but that is a cause for concern. So we need to watch that pretty closely. Hey, Scott, just in terms of the vaccine rollout, I, I mean, it, it seems to me that things are really moving along at a rapid clip. You're seeing millions of people getting vaccinated every day. Um, but this weekend, Dr. Fauci was also talking about some of the concerns about people who won't get vaccinated, who don't want to get this vaccine at this point. Where do we stand on that? I know you've said that by by May or, you know, maybe even earlier, by April, we could have a glut of these vaccines sitting around. But w what's going yeah. to happen? How how quickly can we get convince those people that they should get vaccinated? Yeah, I do believe by, by early April, this is going to be wide open in many states. You're going to see broad availability of the vaccine, that um, supply is going to exceed demand. That doesn't mean everyone's going to be able to get it April 1st, but I think everyone's going to be able to schedule an appointment at some point in early April. We've already seen Michigan do that. That's both good news and bad news. It's good news because it's going to be broader availability. It's bad news insofar as it means demand isn't as brisk. And this is what we've predicted, that as you move down the age continuum, you're going to see that demand isn't as deep as it was for the older individuals. And so you're going to have to do more to try to stimulate demand. I don't think it's just vaccine hesitancy. There are some people who are hesitant to get the vaccine, but I think it's going to be a little bit of complacency among younger people um, and also an issue of convenience. It's not so easy to get vaccinated. So people who work nine to nine, take care of families, can't go online, schedule an appointment, show up at a designated time to get vaccinated. So we're going to need to open clinics that are 24-7, no, no appointment required, just show up. We're going to need to find ways to get vaccines into the hands of doctors in hard-to-reach communities so that we can have trusted intermediaries vaccinating individuals. And we're going to need to do more to stimulate demand. We have not been stimulating demand. There's been very few commercials. I mean, there are some in Connecticut. Connecticut's actually been doing a good job with public service <laughs> campaigns, but most of the states are not doing that because they've been reluctant to, because they said, well, we have more demand than supply. We shouldn't be trying to stimulate additional demand. The problem is that's not something, as you know, that you can just turn on. You can't suddenly start running commercials and stimulate a whole bunch of demand. We need to be doing this from the outset. So we need to really start doing that right now, starting a message to younger individuals who may feel less at risk for COVID that they too should get vaccinated. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.